Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on baselining. So, before we set a baseline in Microsoft Project, it's very important that we take a look at our schedule, make sure that everything's as it should be, and that we're happy that this is an accurate forecast of what's actually going to happen going into the future. Okay, so at this point, every task technically should have a resource assigned to it. So I've got a couple there that I'm missing. In fact, for the ones that don't have a resource assigned, I'm just going to assign myself. So click on those two, assign resources, and Tom Henry. Okay, great. So now every task has a resource. What I now want to do is create some specific scheduling situations. And to do this, I'm going to add some deadlines to my schedule. Now, at the moment, I've been given a deadline, let's say, for example, my overall project, or milestone two in this case, must be completed by 325, let's say. Okay, giving ourselves a little bit of slack there, considering the finish date is 323. So to do that, most people will be tempted to come in here and change the finish date. No. Never, ever, ever in Microsoft Project should you adjust start or finish date columns. Actually, there's just absolutely no need to do it. I actually recommend to Microsoft that they make these read only. Okay, absolutely no need to be adjusting dates. You know, read only for auto scheduled, maybe make them read write for manually scheduled. Hint, hint there, Microsoft, if you're, li if you're listening. The reason I don't like to do that is because you will apply scheduling constraints, and we're going to talk about those now. So for this project, I'm going to say that this task here, task eight, I need to wait on some parts before I can start this task for whatever reason. OK, so instead of it being three, three, we've actually got a date of three, seven, unfortunately. All right. So in this scenario, I'm going to double click on the task, go to the advanced tab here. And I'm going to put a constraint type. You can see here there's different types as soon as possible is the default, which means as soon as the project scheduling engine says we can do it, get it done. You can also constrain the finish date to finish no earlier than or finish no later than. You can put a fixed constraint, must finish on. So that finish date will not adjust whatsoever, must start on. So those are examples of inflexible constraints, whereas opposed to a flexible constraint, which would be start no earlier than. So it can start no earlier than a particular date, but it could start later, which is exactly what we want because we're waiting on the parts. But, you know, we're waiting on the parts is one thing. But if other things go wrong with the project, well, we're still not going to get started until a later date after the parts have arrived anyway. So this is the one I'm going to use. Start no earlier than. So the parts are the constraint, but we could start later if necessary. Um, Let's see what's the dates here. So, you know, we're, we're currently scheduled to, to start on 3 3. I think we said a date of 3 in February, March. Let's go for March 10th, you know, a week late. And press OK. Now, a couple of things have happened on the Gantt chart. You might have noticed that it just pushed that date out. And you can see if you hover over it, 3 10, that's the new start date. It's also put in the indicators column, a little calendar icon. Ah, this task has a start no earlier than constraint of 3.10.16. Oh, okay, right, well, that's fine. But watch what happens if I adjust any date, the start or finish date, which I've told you do not do, but you can in Microsoft Project. 2.11, instantly the same result as what we've just done. We've applied a start no earlier than scheduling constraint just by changing a date. And the reason I don't like that is because we could get started earlier on that task. Let's say the whole project is brought forward a month. Well, the parts we're still waiting on because that's been ordered and that we're waiting on. But this task could potentially start earlier than. So never, ever, ever in Microsoft Project, unless there's a true scenario, should you be applying scheduling constraints either directly or indirectly. So what I recommend is if you ever want to apply a scheduling constraint, I've just undone that. Don't adjust the dates. Double click on it and make it a logical decision using these particular constraint types here. Wherever possible, you want it to be as soon as possible. But obviously things happen and we have to wait on parts from time to time. One other thing, whenever I apply a scheduling constraint, 
as we've seen, it's very easy to accidentally do this. So what I like to do is add a note to document that extreme circumstance. So to do that, I double clicked on the task, which brought up the task information dialog. And as opposed to the advanced tab this time, we're going to go for the notes tab. Now, it doesn't tell you who or a time and date stamp or anything in here. So I like to come in here and put my initials, space, hyphen, space, today's date uh, to... 23, 2016. Space hyphen space. We are oops, we are waiting on parts for this task. And I could elaborate more if I like there, but that'll do for the purposes of this. So now, whenever you see a constraint on the Gantt chart, sorry, in the indicators column in the table. If you hover over it, you'll see that constraint, but you'll also see a note documenting the reason for that constraint. So that's a good best practice there so that anybody else looking at your project, they know, oh, yeah, Tom knows what he's doing. That's He's documented that extreme circumstance there. Great. Good job, Tom. All right. So that's the constraints. Use them as infrequently as possible, but as much as necessary, obviously. Sometimes you just need to overwrite the project scheduling engine, which is exactly what we've done. OK, so for milestone two here, I want to give it a deadline. So I'm going to say this task must be done by 3.32. <laughs> Good one, Tom. Uh, let's say, uh, all right, let, let's, let's think about it when we get there. But I want to give it a date. And this is a, a very common scenario. A lot of people will come to me and say, look, I can't let the scheduling engine depict the dates for me. I need to kind of tell you the dates. And I say to them, OK, that's great. But consider using a deadline. To do this, we double click on the task. We go to the advanced tab here. And above the constraint type that we were just using, we will see deadline. So I think we had 3.30. So opposed to 3.30 or 3.32, as I wanted. Let's go for. Uh, Let's give ourselves a little bit of leeway. Let's say a week later. Let's go for the 6th of April. And OK. And when I press OK on the dialog, oh, nothing in the indicators column. The dates didn't change. That milestone still, oh, what's that? Oh, yes, we get a green arrow. And that's the deadline date. So basically, at the moment, because our project it's not going past the deadline. We're all good. But it tells us when that deadline is, and we can see it, and we can see how close we're getting. So rather than overriding the scheduling engine, like we have for task A, consider using a deadline, and we'll see what happens if we do go past that deadline shortly. Okay? So a couple of cool little tips there. Uh, using constraints, using deadlines, documenting constraints. You can also document your deadlines. Make sure that all tasks have a resource assigned to them. Otherwise, technically, they can never be completed. Do not assign resources to the summary tasks. And you'll also notice I have not assigned any resources to my milestones. They're just moments in time. No one needs to do anything there. OK, perfect. So at this point, I am ready to set my baseline. I'm pretty happy that this is an accurate forecast of my project and what's exactly going to happen. So to do this, I'm going to click on the project ribbon. I then go to the schedule section of the project ribbon, click on the set baseline button and click set baseline. Now at this point, I have the option to, select, uh, to set a baseline for selected tasks. So I could just do phase one for now and maybe phase two will be baselined another uh, later date. Or I can do the entire project. To keep it simple, I'm going to baseline the entire project. Press OK. That's it. Nothing happened. Well, I can tell you that it, it definitely did happen. Let me explain to you what goes on behind the scenes. I know we've done this in the presentation, but let me show you. So if I go to what's called the tables drop down, I want to look for the baseline table. So I'm actually going to click on the table here in the view ribbon, more tables, and I'm going to look for the baseline table and click apply. 
So what I can see here is the duration, start, finish, work, cost for baseline zero, the first one that we set. So when we set the baseline, it took a copy of the baseline, uh, sorry, the duration and put it into baseline duration for each task. It took the start date, put it into the baseline cell, finish date, baseline finish, just like the presentation. So let me come in here and clear the baseline. So to clear a baseline, in the same way, we click set baseline counterintuitively and we click clear baseline for the entire project. Yep. So we can see when we clear that baseline, these values go to null. When I set the baseline and set the baseline, bearing in mind there is more than one baseline. We can use any of these baselines, but the one that counts for stuff in terms of variance is that baseline generally referred to as baseline zero because it has no number after it. When we press OK there, we can see these dates. Just for completeness here, I'm going to clear that again. When we set baseline one and press OK, nothing. OK, that's because the only one that drives the, the, the variances in this actual baseline table is baseline zero. You could have inserted baseline one duration like so. And now we can see those dates. And if we clear baseline one, we can see it. That goes back to nothing. So, you know, everything you do in Microsoft Project is stored in a column somewhere. That's the kind of key thing I'm trying to get across here. So I'm going to set the baseline again for the entire project. You know, by default, it's based on zero, so we can just say OK, and that's it. If you want to see that baseline, what I like to do is click on the Format ribbon and click on the Baseline drop-down in the Bar Styles section of the Format ribbon and click Baseline. Now we can see in the Gantt chart, side by side, next to our tasks, the baseline underneath it. So this gray line represents the baseline. The blue line represents the task. Pretty cool. Let's leave that there and we can see how when, the, when we get started with the project, you know, things may slip from that baseline, heaven forbid. All right, that's it for baselining. Thank you very much for watching the video and please stay tuned.